our NXCAM webinar series. Uh, this is uh, the episode one, and the focus today is on uh, programming automation. So I will just start uh, introducing um, our today's presenters. So we have uh, Joe Taylor, he's a uh, UK pre-sales consultant for NXCAM and additive manufacturing. Uh, we also have Steph Verosso, uh, who is part of the EMEA pre-sales uh, center of excellence team. And he also has a focus on NXCAM and additive manufacturing. And then it's myself, I'm part of the EMEA portfolio development team with a focus on part manufacturing. So we will display this slide at the end, uh, should you wish to get in touch uh, with uh, any of us. So um, uh, to start with, I just wanted to, to uh, get you familiarized with these webinar objectives. Uh, and the, the ones to come. So a few years uh, ago, we were running um, uh, regular uh, full day technical sessions on NXCAM, and this was happening on a quarterly basis. And the last one was back uh, in March 2020, uh, just before the lockdown. So we're now reintroducing these activities under a digital format. Uh, they will be taking place, like I've already said, on a regular basis. And as we respect your time, uh, we have decided to make these sessions not longer than 30 minutes. We know how difficult it is for you to get out of your or, or daily jobs and, and concentrate on, on uh, calls these days. Um, also for additional flexibility, we are running uh, uh, for these webinars um, uh, uh, sessions on both morning and afternoon. And we will make a, a, a playback available to those who have registered, uh, but uh, have uh, were unable to attend. So each session will have a focus on a specific part manufacturing topic. Uh, the sessions are supported by Siemens experts, and the goal is to share uh, recommended uh, best practices. Uh, you also have uh, the opportunity to provide feedback on would-be topics when completing uh, the short feedback survey form, which I'll give you more details towards the end. So uh, let's uh, uh, start with uh, today's topics on, uh, again, programming automation. We'll be covering uh, feature-based machining and the ability to recognize machining features on a part model. We'll be looking at uh, uh, an NX model and read product and manufacturing information, also known as PMI, added by the designer as a 3D model annotation. This is also valid for important models. So we're not just fixed on, on NX. We can import any third party um, uh, data formats. Uh, we then uh, show you and explain how to best capture information, uh, which could be surface finish, dimensional and positioning tolerances, etc., as data that will affect the selection of the machining processes and tools. So, for example, a different level of tolerance uh, can trigger and will trigger the selection uh, of uh, a different machining method with extra operations. Uh, it's important to emphasize that uh, uh, with uh, the Siemens NX technology, we do follow uh, what we call a model-based definition process, which is simply the practice of producing a complete digital definition of a product within a 3D model. And this includes, of course, the geometry, PMI, and other uh, metadata uh, uh, to be consumed by downstream manufacturing processes across the company. So with that, I would like now to hand over to Steph and Joe uh, for the technical presentations. Okay, so switching over to uh, to a different uh, different computer. So, so uh, good afternoon uh, all, and uh, thank you, Pedro. Uh, so let me start by showing first the result uh, of of the automation I did on this this let's so-called uh, test part. And you see, I have an, an, an mold here uh, with, uh, with different sliders. Uh, so different uh, uh, dimensions of the slider. So uh, the witness and, uh, and the depth. 
Uh, so it's an, uh, a slider open pocket and a closed pocket with some holes in there. Hey? So you see M5 holes, M6 holes. No operations defined yet, uh, no tools defined yet. Uh, the only thing I defined before is my workpiece. Hey? So my part to be cut uh, and uh, my blank material. And so that's that's the only thing which I defined. And the first step I'm I'm going to do to make this this clear is that I'm going to search for uh, a geometry which NX recognize. Uh, so in this case, pocket slider that's created as a custom uh, a feature to recognize. And um, I'm going to check uh, steps here, and that are just the holes, blind or true holes, bit thread, no threads. That's that's all the same. Um, the holes. Recognize that's out of the box stuff. The sliders which I'm, I'm selecting now, that's uh, that's the custom stuff. Next step will be select it all, and uh, I can create an, an a feature process for for this. And so not only uh, the holes which are uh, best practice out of the box, uh, but also uh, in my operation set there is a custom uh, custom. Uh, operations created uh, based on the geometry, which is uh, recognized. Um, now you can see if I go back to the operation navigator, uh, so hold on, so to the operation navigator and to the geometry view, you see that there are three groups created, three feature groups, and then and some operations as an operation groups uh, with uh, some some uh, operations in there, which I can generate directly. And this is a, a three-step uh, three, uh, three uh, uh, done in, in three steps, let's say. Um, so after generation of these this, uh, uh, operations, I already have my toolpath available. So as you can see, it's, it's coming up now. This will take, um, in, this case, in my case, with the slider and all the holes, like uh, a spot drill, drill and tap. And uh, it takes 30 seconds. And so it's it's a roughing operation in there. It's a finishing operation in there. And it's a spot drill for the M5 holes and a spot drill for the M6 holes and drilling uh, and tapping also. If you want to do a treadmill on different uh, size holes, it's also possible. I just defined this as a tapping uh, tapping thread. So this is how you uh, get to the end result. So let me now uh, show you how that, well, <laughs> of course, this will be a normal operations, but now I'm going to show you how to get there, how to get that uh, automation. Now I'm going to show you here, this is my, my teach part. It's, it's just in a different mold with some uh, predefined operations in here. Uh, also uh, normal operations just created by NXCAM. Uh, next step will be that I'm going to teach uh, NXCAM uh, to recognize uh, this slider uh, geometry. Yeah, so we have that the, the three levels, two open pockets and one closed pocket. Uh, I'm going to uh, tell NX that he um, from now on uh, will recognize uh, the geometry forms like this, uh, even when the, the uh, dimensions are different. I'm going to create a new feature type and give it a an, an logical name. So pocket slider, I'm going to call this one. I need to define an, uh, a recognition rule. Um, I can, uh, I will, I will use the same here. So let me use the same here. So I'll give an enter. Um, the pocket slider is done. And then the only thing what I have to do, and this is a one time effort. I only have to select the geometry. So when I'm selecting all open and closed pockets here for this uh, slider pocket, it will be stored in the database and ready for reuse, which I'm showing you in a second when the when I uh, teach this uh, recognition rule. So I'm going to hit the teach recognition rule, hit OK, and then it's stored in the database. Now, just for testing, I'm going to do find features again as I did before on that the other mold and as you can see when I check the pocket slider recognize um, or find feature and this will be a pocket slider one the number one uh, means that th this is the first feature of this kind if you have 15 that probably will be 15 numbers and so 
next step, I'm going to create a group from that. Um, and now I'm going to create a group that is not really logical with one feature, but if you have multiple, there will be multiple features in this geometry group. Give it a logical name again, and that's that's what you have to do with automation anyway. Make logical names and use use logical names just to, to know, that you know what you're doing and what you're dealing with. Drag the operations in there. And then the second step in this automation, I'm going to teach NX to apply these to operations when this feature is found. Um, so in the teach operation dialogue, I can show you that all attributes available in the two different operations will be there. So that's a feature operation uh, parameters um, and the tool parameters. Um, so that this is all available for further uh, customization. Joe will show you later in this uh, session a bit of that. Um, and of course, some, some, uh, some other attributes which are available for uh, customization. Teach the machine rules and hit OK. And then uh, the second part is also stored in the database. So the feature recognition is stored, the uh, operations are stored. Um, and, and that's basically what it is to, to automate this. Now, let me show you the same mold. I'm going to just change the color here. Um, so you can see that it's, it is a new test of, of this part. Um, just going to do this stuff again. I'm going to show you that it's the same part, uh, but then uh, with the part defined, blank defined, going to find the features here. Select the pocket slider, select the steps. Uh, as I said, the steps, that's the out of the box uh, best practices uh, content, which is already there for everybody who has NX installed. Select all found features, create a feature process. Um, and then that's, that's basically the three steps what you have to do. Find features, create your feature uh, process or create your uh, uh, geometry groups with the operations. And uh, the last step in this will be uh, just generate them. And that's, let me, uh, that's also uh, something all tools retrieve from the library. And uh, that's, uh, that's done automatically based on the rules you define. Then just generate uh, all operations. And that's, uh, it's going to take uh, 30 seconds and uh, I think it's 35 seconds. And then all your operations are done. And from now on, all slider pockets I'm going to uh, create in future for any of the molds with this same geometry will be recognized. So roughing is done, finishing is done, and um, the uh, spot drill of the M5, spot drill M6, drilling uh, for M5, M6, and tapping for M5, M6. And that's it, basically. That's all there is. So over to uh, you, Joe. Uh, thanks for, for the time uh, you invest, invest in this. And uh, Joe is going to show you a bit more on um, the automation, including PMI. So thanks. Sorry, guys, I was on mute there. So I hope you can all hear me. Good afternoon. Uh, as Pedro has already introduced me, my name's Joe Taylor, and I work for the uh, UK team as part of the uh, pre-sales for NX CAM and NX Additive. And I'm going to follow on from what uh, from what Steph's just done a really nice job of, of introducing around feature-based machining, but uh, with a focus on PMI, product manufacturer information, and how that is a, a driver and an influencer in the, uh, the operations and tools that are selected when it comes to automatically creating operations against features. So first of all, I'd like to uh, just quickly open up a, a sample part. This part, I'll share the link to all the attendees later on. You can get hold of this as part of the feature-based machining kit. It comes with everything you need to get started. But as you can see, pretty generic style part. Uh, we've got some uh, PMI on the uh, components, some for surface finish. We've got a H7. Uh, limit of fit, some linear tolerances, uh, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about this pocket a bit later on, this 40 mil wide pocket with a plus 0.6 less nothing tolerance. 
Well, first of all, I want to show you a little bit about how we use uh, PMI on, on products in, in NX CAM. So I'm going to create a new manufacturer setup. So that's that's entering the CAM part of the application for those not familiar with NX. And what I'm then going to do is create a clone of the design data, which we call a wavelength uh, body in, in NX. And when we do that, we create an associative link, which allows us to work on a body which isn't the design part. So we've got freedom to work with the data. And as you can see, it also brings through the PMI. So we've now got an associative link to the design part for geometry and PMI. The next part of the workflow is to create the uh, workpiece, which is basically specifying what we want to machine. So I can select the geometry in the window. And then we can do the same as what Steph did and start the feature-based machining steps, which is basically to, first of all, find the features. And for this first example, I'm just going to look at the holes, uh, which we call steps in the feature, in the feature library. Uh, and in particular, I'm only interested in two steps, uh, two holes, sorry, one hole that doesn't have a PMI directly associated with the size of the hole and the other one which does. OK, so when we go to our uh, a nice selection tool in NX, I can select the feature in the UI and you can see that in our feature navigator, uh, it displays the, the, the features for us and switch on the PMI toggle. We can see that there's a, a linear dimension against both. But this one also has a H7, a limit of fit tolerance. So that's a, a, a tolerance on the, on the diameter of the hole. So if I create a feature process, first of all, for the, the hole that doesn't have uh, the PMI, NX is going to look at the hole, it's going to look at the size of the hole, it's going to select a tool and appropriate operations to machine that hole. It's a 10 mil hole, so it's going to spot drill, which does two purposes, spots and creates a chamfer. The second operation is to drill the hole size. So it's selected a 10 mil drill and it's gone straight in with a drilling operation. Now let's have a look and see what happens when we apply the same rules uh, to a hole that has a, a limit of fit tolerance. So again, we go through exactly the same steps. We don't have to select anything differently. We simply run the feature process creation. And this time you can see we have an extra operation that's been created. So the PMI and the tolerance has driven NX to output, again, a spot drill to drill a chamfer, again, a drilling operation, but this time it's selected a slightly smaller drill. And that's to leave some stock material into either ream or, in this case, to bore the hole to size. So it's all about using PMI to drive the decisions that NX makes around which operation types it's going to use. So it's all very well on holes, but what about other features on parts? Very similar to what uh, uh, Steph just showed us with his slider. Let's have a look at this pocket. So the first thing I'm going to need to do uh, to, to decide how we're going to machine it is to find the feature. So the same way that we went about it uh, for the holes and the same way that Steph showed is, is simply searching for that feature type. In this case, it's a slot. Um, I can disregard the other feature. I'm only interested in the one. And then the same as what Steph did, what we're going to do is create a feature group uh, on, this, on this feature. The feature group allows us to then create the, um, the, the, the specific operations that we want to attribute to the, to the feature uh, and, and as, as Steph did before, teach those back. So again, I'll just rename this something logical. I'm going to call this PMI slot because it's PMI on the slot and that's the example. And I'm going to put R and F because I want to rough and finish this operation. If I was looking at this from a machinist point of view, plus 0.6 less nothing is, is quite a big tolerance. So I'm going to create a pocketing operation and I'm going to finish that pocket in a single operation. So I don't want to leave any wall stock in. Uh, just going to pick a tool out of the library. Uh, we've got quite a, a, an extensive out of the box library. So I can just search for a 12 mil tool. Pick the first one off the top of the list just for this example. I can then go through the dialog, change some parameters. I'll make it a follow part. So it's cut in an open pocket, select a thickness. And I'm going to turn off cut compensation because, as I said, plus or minus, sorry, plus 0.6 minus nothing is an open tolerance. I'm very confident my machine can hit that limit uh, very easily. So you can see in a couple of seconds, we've created the operation. I've simulated it and validated it in the display, and that's great. Now, what if that tolerance was a tighter tolerance? What if it was, you know, plus or minus 05? So this time, I'm going to copy that feature group, rename it to uh, rough and finish with cutcom. OK, I'm going to have to uh, just reassociate the feature group with a feature. And then what I'm going to do is look at that first roughing operation. And this time I'm going to leave some stock because I want to break it into two operations. If I was machining this, I would want to run the fish finish path a couple of times to ensure uh, that we get into size. So all I do is change the parameters in the roughing operation to leave half a mil um, material on the walls. And then what I'm going to do again, a nice uh, feature in the next is to copy and paste the operation, rename it as uh, F for finishing. And I'm going to change some more parameters in this operation. So I'm going to 
we turn the stock to zero, I want to finish the uh, the wall. I'll select a profile uh, a cut pattern because I only want to cut once, and I'll turn on the cut compensation because I want that extra level of control uh, from the machine's point of view. And there we have it. I've now got uh, one feature group for the for the for the feature to finish in one go, and I've got another feature group to finish the operation in a rough and a finished operation. Now what we have to do is very similar to what um, uh, Steph just showed us, and that's to teach. The, the operations, but this time I'm going to add some intelligence. I'm going to apply some logic. So again, using all the attributes that are available to us, I'm going to select the upper and lower length uh, values. So in this case, it's a plus nothing, plus 0 0.6, but it could be a plus or minus. So for that reason, I'm going to do the lower value times negative one. So if it is a minus 0 0.2, that will make that a positive number. I'm then going to add that to the upper limit. So if it was negative 0.2 plus 0.2, that would give us a tolerance band of 0.4. And then I'm going to add a condition. So I'm going to say, if that value is greater than, say, 0.2 millimeters, I want to use this uh, operation and uh, the, this operation set that we've just created. So once I've taught that, I'll just copy this string to save time. Once I've taught that, that's now in the database. That's now in that uh, uh, feature library. So I can now go into my second feature group, again, go into the teach operation sets. Again, you can see all the parameters for both operations and tools are all available. I can paste that string and simply flip the condition. So instead of greater than, I'll now make it less than or equal to. So anything with a tolerance band less than 0.2 will now apply the second rule, which is going to be roughly plus half a mil and finishing with cut compensation. And it's basically as simple as that. So let's test it. Let's clear these operations out that I've just, uh, I've just created. Let's go back to the operation navigator and this time at uh, the feature navigator and this time we're going to create the feature processes. The same as what Steph showed, we can go down to our operation sets that we just created. And you can see that under that slot partial rectangle, I've got those two uh, feature groups and associated feature processes. And now in the next, you can see, yes, because the tolerance is greater than 0.2, it's created a single operation to rough and finish that cavity, that slot. So going back a step to the start of the, the process where I showed you that we have associativity with design, if I just jump back into the design part, say the designer has made a change, they've decided that there's a, a dowel or something that slides into this, this slot that needs type spin, uh, tighter finish, we'll change the tolerance to a bilateral plus or minus uh, 0 0.05. So they give us a tolerance band of, of 0 0.1. So now if we go back into manufacturing, we can see the PMI has changed. We need to now go and validate that change by approving it because obviously we need to be made aware there's a change. Yes, I want to accept those changes in the tolerance. And then we can delete that previous operation that we created uh, automatically uh, and recreate the feature process on that feature. And this time what you'll see will happen is it reads that tolerance value and that value is now driving the operation selection, the tool selection out of the library to determine what sort of operation type we need to use. So now there you can see we've created the two operations. So it's all very well me showing you this on this uh, uh, on this test part, this um, uh, teach part, sorry. Uh, but let's open up a, a component that's uh, it's already a cam set up and it's got a multitude of slots. Slots of different depths, widths, uh, corner radiuses, and in this case, tolerances that have been applied to it in PMI. Because of the logic and intelligence behind feature-based machine, I've been able to add certain uh, uh, logic into the uh, feature finder, which means that it will work out depth of cut, uh, tools to be selected, dependent on certain parameters from the features. So what you're about to see here is we select all those operations, create feature process, again, looking at the same rules that we just created, and we will almost instantly, very quickly, create a full set of operations for these slots. Okay, there we go. So as you would expect, four of them have got a tolerance of plus or minus 0.25, a tolerance band of half a mil, Two of them have got a uh, plus or minus 0 0.05 for 50 microns, so that's a tolerance band of 0 0.1. So two of them fall within the category of requiring what I would uh, expect to be a, a roughing and a finishing operation, and all the rest are finished in one go. Okay, so there again, you can see an example of the depth of cuts and the difference in the, in the, in the uh, size of the features, uh, but we've still been able to automatically create the operations to, to cut these, these features. Okay. So I suppose the final thing to show before I close is, again, let's make a change. So let's just prove that by updating the tolerance on that 25 mil slot, again, jumping into the design part, we'll automatically update the, uh, the, the feature processes that are selected that are driven by the PMI. 
So let's make this plus or minus 0.1. Let's put it right on the threshold of that rule of uh, rate at less than or equal to 0 0.2. Uh, and rerun the, uh, the feature finding. So again, we have to approve the changes, and then we will delete out the uh, the now out of date operation, and we will create a new feature process on that feature. And that's it. Fantastic. We've now created that rough and finished operation. So quite a simplistic example, but a nice example of, of showing how PMI can do more than just, you know, add a reamer in, you know, we can actually define what sort of operation process is going to be used on the shop floor, whether it's going to be two operations, three operations, whether it's going to be uh, a, a helical um, uh, mill or whether we can drill and ream. There's a lot of logic and power that we can apply in, in feature-based machining. And as I said before, we've got the feature-based machining uh, kit, which is available to anybody. Obviously, you, you need an X to use it, but that's, uh, we can get around that as well with the, the new play trial that we can do for NX Cam. So if there's any questions on, on what you've seen, please put them in the chat and we'll, we'll pick them up at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. So I would need now uh, control. Uh, so, so if you, can you tell me if you can see my screen, please? Yes, we got it, yeah. Okay, so just to, to finalize, um, uh, and again, thanks, Joe and Steph, for, for your presentations. I'd just like to summarize uh, uh, the fact that programming automation within an X will deliver uh, important reductions in programming times. It will deliver programming efficiency through the capture and reuse of proven machining methods. Also, uh, it allows for faster, repeatable, and consistent NC programming. But at the same time, and that was clearly shown by both uh, Steph and Joe, uh, flexible uh, with uh, the arguments uh, of uh, feature teaching that both of you, uh, Joe and Steph, shown. Also, users can apply changes or influence the automated programming. So it, you're not uh, fixed to what uh, the software would deliver, you can still influence uh, the final results. And, uh, and last but not least, it delivers part manufacturing consistent, uh, consistency and quality.